Our next step in the road toward understanding why uniform continuity matters. Like what is the actual moral of the story that's going on in analysis that gives rise to uniform continuity? I wanna do a quick motivational video here that will help to cast uniform continuity as an example of what I might call a local to global love affair. In other words, we can see uniform continuity as the product of being able to avoid the heartbreak that comes with sometimes trying to take an infinite collection of truths and glue them together into a uniform single truth. That a uniformly continuous function has this really nice property that having a delta at every point at every different x in the domain somehow can be all glued together to give me a single delta to rule them all. So in this video, I wanna provide some motivation for probably the best known result in the study of uniform continuity, which shows how we can discover uniformity in a continuous function's domain. Let's take a look at how it works. All right, so remember once again what uniform continuity is about. Uniform continuity is about our ability, once you have selected an epsilon, to be able to pick uniformly a delta such that all of the x's across the domain that are delta close to one another will have their images be epsilon close to one another. So it's the ability for me to pick my delta and then have that same delta work everywhere in my domain. So here's the reciprocal function. This was our paradigmatic example of a function which is continuous on a domain, namely the open interval from 0 to 1, but which was not uniformly continuous on that domain. If I pick this delta, for example, it works really well out here where the graph is shallow, but once the graph starts to get steeper and we get closer to that vertical asymptote, this same delta no longer works. So I decide, well, maybe I should have picked a smaller delta. But then even if I had picked a smaller delta, if I get a little closer to that vertical asymptote, that smaller delta doesn't work anymore either. And so all of the different deltas that are associated with the different x's in my domain, those deltas get smaller and smaller and smaller, and the closer that we get to that vertical asymptote for this function, those deltas get arbitrarily closer to zero. And as we're gonna see, this is the problem that is going to motivate us to find a particular kind of solution to this lack of uniform continuity. So how can the domain of a continuous function force that function to be uniformly continuous? Well, let's suppose that we happen to know up front that our function is already continuous on a domain E. Right, so continuity is something we'll take for granted. That means that if you pick an epsilon greater than zero for me, then I can go to any point in the domain of my function and at each of those points find its own delta, such that all of the points that are delta close to that x will have their images epsilon close to that f of x. So every x is going to get a different delta. Maybe over here, delta has to be 0.1. Maybe over here, it can be 2.3. Maybe over here, it can be 1.5. Different deltas for different x's. And so we might write something like this. Like delta is a function of x. Delta depends on x. The problem, of course, is that gives us a lot of deltas. There is, is a delta for each x in the domain. And so if I have like a, an open interval or something like that as my domain, I'm going to have uncountably infinitely many different deltas potentially, that could work at different x values. Now, if I happen to get so fortunate as for there to exist a smallest delta among all possible points in my domain, then that smallest delta is going to be my Rosetta Stone. That smallest delta is going to be one that's going to work for all x. Because all x's that are delta close for that smallest delta are going to get their images within epsilon for every single x across the domain. The problem, of course, is that a smallest delta that works among all points might not be a positive number. The set of deltas that are associated with the x's in my domain might not have an infimum, a greatest lower bound, which is greater than zero. The infimum might be zero. Indeed, that was exactly the case that happened with our reciprocal function. The closer that we get to that vertical asymptote, the smaller that the delta that goes with my epsilon gets. In fact, we kind of have to pick something like, um, I don't know, delta equals one over epsilon. It's something we have, to, we have to pick some delta that gets increasingly smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller as the x gets closer and closer to zero. And there is no floor. There is no sort of bottom 
to that bottomless pit. The closer that we get to that vertical asymptote of this function, the closer we have to dig down towards zero when we pick our delta. And so the set of deltas that go along with the x's in the domain of the open interval from 0 to 1 for the reciprocal function, that set of deltas goes all the way down so that its infimum is equal to 0. And that's a problem. If the deltas don't have a positive infimum, if they crowd down to 0, if they accumulate on 0, then what we get is an instance of local to global heartbreak. Even though there is a positive delta that we can pick at every single x in my domain, there is no bottom, there is no pit other than zero. So the smallest delta that we could pick is zero, but we can't pick zero as a value of delta. It doesn't give us a reasonable notion of continuity. And so what we want is we want a way to avoid the local to global heartbreak. And the way, as you'll remember from our earlier videos, that we can always know that we are able to avoid this heartbreak that comes from trying to glue together infinitely many truths into a uniform single truth. The way to do that is to predicate those truths on a compact set. Compactness was exactly the notion that we came up with as a way to avoid that heartbreak. On a compact set, if I have a collection of local criteria, local truths that hold on, on a collection of open sets across my set, then by cover finiteness, I can extract a finite subcover. Only finitely many of those truths are needed to blanket my entire set of quantification, my entire domain in this case. And once we only have finitely many truths to choose from, things get a lot easier. We can avoid that heartbreak. And so the idea behind what we're going to try to prove in the next video is that if the domain of a continuous function is a compact set, then automatically that function will be uniformly continuous. I'll say that again. A continuous function on a compact domain is uniformly continuous. And the idea behind the proof is going to be to use that cover finiteness property. That even though every x is going to get its own delta, we will be able to show that there's only finitely many of those x's and therefore finitely many of those deltas that are really necessary to cover all of what happens on my domain. And since there's only a finite number of positive deltas to pick from, that finite set of deltas will have a smallest delta that we can pick. And that smallest delta that we can pick is going to be one that works for all x's across the entire domain. So that's the idea behind the proof of this result. But as I say, this is probably the most frequently cited and frequently used results in all of uniform continuity, that a continuous function when its domain is a compact set, is automatically uniformly continuous. If you want to know the proof, stick around to the next video.